Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for our educational webinar. Today, I'll be covering checkbook control IRA strategies, just some setup and considerations for your checkbook IRA. My name is Corey Deharge. I've been with Advanta since 2016. I spent a number of years as a client account manager, processing thousands of transactions for our client base, ranging from small hard money loans out of a retirement account, all the way up to multi-million dollar real estate projects funded by IRAs or 401ks. So I've got a lot of experience in a wide range of investment strategies that have been done with these checkbook control strategies or directly through individuals' retirement accounts. Uh, we have a great team that's got a lot of strategy experience and would love to help you. So if you have any questions for me directly, you can reach out. I'd be happy to answer or help. All my contact information is here. I'll also have it at the end of the webinar as well displayed. A little bit about Advanta IRA. As a company, we've been around for about 20 years. We've got about 9,500 clients or so, give or take, and just over 2 billion in assets under management. Every client of Advanta IRA has their funds secured up to applicable limits when they're not insured. I'm sorry, not invested rather. Uh, and we also offer each client a dedicated client account manager that actually works with you one-to-one -one in that role I used to serve to learn who you are, what you're trying to invest into, and get a better understanding of how we can best help you as an individual, as opposed to just having a call center that you reach out to with some of those larger retirement custodians where you're really having to re-explain everything you're trying to accomplish. We pair you each with a dedicated concierge style client account manager to help make things smooth and simple for each client that we have. There are a number of different self-directed plans that you could have. So your standard traditional and Roth IRAs that a lot of people are aware of, but there are also lesser known SEP and simple IRAs for small business owners, as well as individual 401k plans, health savings and education savings accounts. So basically, if you've got any US-based retirement account, there is a way to self-direct that and control the investments you're making directly, as opposed to having that money sitting on a volatile and uh, tumultuous stock market that we're looking at right now. If you've not heard about self-direction, that is pretty common. Only about 4% of the retirement accounts in the US are self-directed. And to put that into perspective, I did a poll earlier this year where I researched a poll. There's about $37 trillion in the US retirement systems right now. So of $37 trillion that individuals have in IRAs, 401ks, health savings, education savings accounts, only about 4% of that money is being utilized for self-directed strategies. So it's not uncommon that you may have not heard about this. That's why we do a lot of focus on education always free education from Advanta, and hope that you share this with your friends and family members if you find it useful and valuable to yourself and think someone that you know could have value in it also. It's very easy to get started with the self-direct account. Our application is really only about seven pages. It takes most people about 15 minutes to complete. We can send a digital link via DocuSign if you prefer to do it digitally. Getting your account funded typically does not involve any taxable event or taxable consequence. We'll move the money from a previous plan or actually conduct a new cash contribution if you're looking to make a new account and new money into the account for this calendar year. And then also it's really quick to start investing. We see most clients get an application turned in and turn around with their first investment within about a week and a half to two weeks speaking conservatively. So if you are interested, it doesn't take a long time. It doesn't take a lot of effort. Just reach out and we'll be happy to help get you set up. Now today's webinar, I'm going to be covering the checkbook IRA strategy specifically. I'm going to talk about some setup and some considerations to make. So I've got an agenda here where we're going to go over some of the rules and the asset classes you can hold in a self-direct account, what a checkbook IRA is and how it works, how to set it up and use it, and then winding down or taking funds out of it for personal use. And then I'll wrap up at the end of the webinar by taking everyone's questions. 
If you are aware, uh, there is a question box in this GoToWebinar platform. So you can go ahead and type your questions in there. As I am doing this webinar solo today, I'm gonna hold all questions till the end. I've got a specific slide to review those questions. So please type them in as we're going, uh, but just in the interest of keeping myself on track, I'm gonna field all of those questions at one specific time at the end of the webinar. And I'll be happy to answer everything that comes in uh, relevant to the webinar and if, even if uh, there's a few things that are sem semi-relevant I'll be happy to cover those as well or at the very least get back to you with an answer after this webinar is concluded. Now I also want to let you know if you're looking at the go to webinar box that you've got there I dropped a pdf of the slide deck from today into the handout section uh, if you're not able to access that or download it, you can always reach out to me afterwards. We'd be happy to send you a copy of the PDF slide deck. And just for everyone's reference, this webinar, if you're watching live here, will go up on our YouTube channel within about 24 hours. So you can always check it out and rewatch this webinar again in the future or send it along to any friends or relatives that you think could benefit from it themselves. Now, a quick disclaimer from Advanta IRA and myself specifically, we are not a financial advisor, tax advisor, or fiduciary. So we do not provide any investment advice or endorse any specific products. All information and materials from our educational content is for educational purposes only. And we always insist that you consult with your own attorneys, accountants, financial advisors, for your due diligence before entering any type of investment or investment strategy. As far as self-directed rules and regulations, the IRS is very simple as what you are and are not allowed to invest into and also who you are or are not allowed to invest with. As far as prohibited investments, an IRA account is not allowed to invest into life insurance, nor collectibles, which would be antiques, fine wine, artwork, stamps, anything that the IRS would consider a subjective valued asset, meaning you may see it to have a certain value if you're a baseball card collector, but your neighbor that has no interest in baseball wouldn't pay pennies for those baseball cards. Those types of items are not allowed to be held within retirement accounts. There are some coins allowed. Uh, we do have precious metal investors and those are separate webinars and separate topics we've covered specifically. But in, in the general context life insurance and collectibles are asset classes that you're not allowed to invest into and then prohibited transactions involve any investments with people that are disqualified persons from yourself and your retirement account i'll cover that a little bit more directly on the very next slide but it's just important to note that prohibited transactions are between yourself and a disqualified person so you can't receive a benefit or a disqualified person can't receive a benefit from your retirement account. UBIT and UDFI taxes are specific taxes that apply to very certain investment strategies. We're not necessarily covering those today, but if you are interested, I uh, have those listed here and you could reach out to us further if either of those apply to your investment strategy that you're considering. Now, disqualified persons, as I referenced on the last slide, are individuals related to you, including yourself as the IRA account holder, your spouse, and anyone on your lineal tree, your parents, your children, up or down your lineal tree are considered disqualified persons. You are allowed to do an investment where you're partnering with disqualified persons, but you can't do an investment where you're on the other side of the investment table or dealing against the disqualified person. For example, you can't buy a piece of property from your parent. If your IRA owns a piece of property, you can't let your children rent it out from you. Those are just a few examples of prohibited transactions with disqualified persons. However, you could buy a piece of property with your IRA and yourself at 50-50 ownership percentage, or yourself and your father's IRA could buy a property together or even your spouse's IRA and your IRA could buy a piece of property together. Those are just a few examples of partnering, which is allowed within a self-directed plan with disqualified persons. It all has to be built on the onset of the investment and you can never exchange ownership with disqualified persons. So feel free to reach out if you're trying to strategize something and just not sure if it's allowed or not allowed. 
So now that I've covered what you can and cannot invest into, and also the partnership strategies that you can or cannot use, I just have this slide to give you a, a brief overview of examples of alternative assets that we see our clients holding in their self-direct accounts. There's a lot of things that you might think are pretty common, like rental property, commercial property, uh, a lot of different real estate assets, uh, but there's also some less common thought about assets like farm animals, movie projects, precious metals, which I referred to earlier, uh, tax deed and lien investing, mortgage loans or unsecured loans, even option contracts. So just a broad range of different types of investments you could hold in a self-direct account. If any of these appeal to you, that's great. If you're also looking for more very unique investments, we've done a completely different webinar, which you can find on our YouTube page that covers some of the most unique investments we've ever seen our clients do. And some of those are really fun and, and unique based on whatever our clients' skill bases are or interest levels are on some different things that you are allowed to hold in your account. Now, the checkbook control strategy is really a strategy that gives you direct access and control of your, retire your retirement account. A custodial or administrative account means that Advanta as the custodian would actually hold the uninvested cash and make the transactions directly through your IRA with the assistance of that client account manager and our online bill payment portal and different things that we offer as a back office for your retirement account. Whereas contrasting that, the checkbook control account means that you're opening a self-direct account funding that account into an LLC or a trust or even a solo 401k where you have direct control of the bank account and you process all the investment transactions in the name of that entity that's been established as the root investment vehicle for your retirement product. That way you can go directly to an auction or directly to a buyer or a seller and make all those transactions in the name of your retirement account. There are a few different ways you can achieve checkbook control. The most commonly known ways are the LLC strategy, which we're going to be focusing mostly on today. But you can also establish a trust in your retirement account that can serve in the same context and capacity as a checkbook control vehicle. Now, the differences here are the management with an LLC. The client can be the manager of their LLC that's held by their retirement account. With a trust, the trustee handles the management, but that cannot be the retirement account holder. The check writing in either capacity is done by the manager or the trustee. So either yourself with an LLC or the trustee, which cannot be yourself in the trust scenario. And all of the titling of investments made within these vehicles are either in the LLC or in the name of that trust. And the IRA is the member of the LLC in that strategy or the grantor and beneficiary in the trust strategy. Now, the key components of a trust through an IRA LLC or an IRA checkbook strategy is that the trust can either be a revocable trust, a special needs trust, or a life insurance trust. And the parties involved are the grantor, which contributes assets to the trust, in most cases cash, the trustee, which manages the assets in the trust, serves as a fiduciary, basically processes the investments and handles the financial responsibilities. And then the beneficiary, which is the ultimate recipient of the assets in the trust. And again, the retirement account would be the grantor and the beneficiary in this case scenario. With a personal property trust, you would establish a bank account. You would have a third party trustee, as I've described on the last two slides, and that would create the checkbook control. With a land trust, which we do see pretty often, they're typically treated like an actual real estate investment. So there would still need to be a third party trustee. There would be checkbook control established, but IRA would actually, Advanta IRA would actually pay the expenses and receive the income directly on behalf of that land trust. So we're holding the asset on our records that is a land trust, and your trustee would submit any time we have a request to make payments out for that property or any specific income would flow back into the retirement account through Advanta. Now, looking at the other side of it, the key components of an LLC for checkbook control. The members of the LLC are the shareholders, the equity holders or owners, which would be the retirement account in a single member strategy. And in a multi-member strategy, it could be 
the retirement account plus yourself plus any other members that are being built into the LLC's operating agreement as owners at the onset. The manager is typically the account holder, but they could also have other individuals listed as managers or decision makers that would be set forth in the operating agreement. And then the operating agreement in itself, which I'll cover in a little bit more detail on a few further slides, listing all the members and their ownership percentages and specifically breaking down some criteria for a retirement account operating agreement, such as that the manager, uh, the, the IRA cannot be the manager, and it has to be a manager managed LLC. We'll cover that in more detail here in a few moments. So a few basic rules about the checkbook IRA LLC. It must be manager managed as I last mentioned. Typically you would list yourself as that manager and or any business partners you have that may also be members or may not be members. It is important to do that because the IRA is not an individual, so it can't be left with management responsibilities because it's basically just an account. It doesn't have the ability to make decisions. You are the individual that would make those decisions on behalf of your own IRA. So again, most individuals list themselves as the manager and maybe a potential business partner or other individuals they choose to have listed as the manager. As I mentioned, it can include multiple members, but their ownership percentage is directly correlated to the contributions built into the LLC. So if you're planning to put $100,000 in an LLC and you have 25,000 in your pocket and your retirement account has 75,000, that ownership percentage would be 2575 with those percentages locked in for each of those respective owners. If more than one owner exists, you cannot change the percentage between disqualified persons. So in that example I just gave, in the future, you can't buy your retirement account out of ownership or vice versa because you're a disqualified person from your retirement account. So that 25-75 split would be consistent until you're ready to liquidate and close this LLC altogether. Additional capital contributions can be made with multi-member LLCs but that ownership percentage must stay the same. So if we're using my same rounded example of a 2575 split, and you need to put 10 more thousand dollars into that LLC, well, 7,500 has to come from your IRA account, and 2,500 has to come from your personal pocket to keep those ownership percentages locked. There can be provisions included relating to prohibited transactions. That is all found on IRS section 4975. You can go look at that through the IRS's website. 4975 is basically all the rules and regulations regarding self-directed investment accounts, what you can and cannot do. We are experts in that as well, so feel free to consult an Advanta representative. If you're a client of ours, you'll have a client account manager that you can speak with. If you're looking or interested in getting an account, that'd be something you could reach out to me and I'd be happy to speak with you about. If you're looking to set up a single member LLC, a true checkbook IRA, there is no tax return required because that entity is considered what's called a disregarded entity for tax purposes. Now that same shelter doesn't necessarily apply when you include multiple members in an LLC, but that is something, again, you would wanna speak with your CPA, your tax preparer, and your Advanta representative, just to see if any tax return would be applicable or necessary in your multi-member retirement investment scenario. And then the last two bullet points on this slide, we're covering some legal case studies and legal information that have come out over the years that does allow this checkbook strategy as an investment for your retirement account. So we're looking at if a single member entity uh, for liability pur purposes, it is dubious under Florida law through the Olmstead case. And then also the case law uh, known as Swanson versus Commissioner and the tax court memo of T.L. Ellis. They will support that you are allowed to serve as the manager of your checkbook IRA LLC. However, you're not allowed to compensate yourself. You can't pay yourself a salary or give yourself any compensation for your duty as the manager, because that would be seen as basically double dipping from the IRS's standpoint. You're doing this and serving as this manager to benefit your retirement account or your future earnings. You should not also be paying yourself any sort of compensation for what you're doing in that capacity now. So when you're looking at forming the checkbook LLC, there are a few simple steps you do need to take. 
you'll need to file for the articles of organization in the state where your LLC is going to be located. You'll list very basic information like the address, the manager's name, and a few other basic details. It is legally required to be filed and the charges vary by state anywhere from 40 to $500. And it can be filed online in most states. We do see clients actually reach out to attorneys or CPAs to set these up. We've got a number of attorneys and CPAs we can refer you to across the country if you're interested. They will charge for that service, but if it's something that you're not familiar with or not comfortable doing yourself, we can certainly provide you a referral for those services. The second aspect is obtaining the tax ID number. Our referral sources would also help you with that if that be your scenario, but you would just go to the IRS and request a tax ID number, listing yourself or any managers as the manager reaching out to obtain that EIN or tax ID number uh, using your own social security number as the manager. And this is what would be used on any tax filings if necessary in the future and also for opening the bank account, which is the next step. So once you have your articles of organization and you have your tax ID number, you would then go open a bank account at any financial institution of your choosing. We also have a few banks that we are familiar with that specialize in checkbook IRA bank accounts. You can use them if you choose, reach out to us for those referrals. Otherwise, any bank that you're already banking with, you should be able to go in and just request to open up a basic business checking account in the name of the LLC you've established, provide them the tax ID number and your articles of organization. You may also need the signature page from your operating agreement showing yourself as the manager, and that should be all that is required. If they're trying to further push you into their retirement product or their IRA, then it's a little bit over their head and you'll want to get Advanta back on the phone to help you get through that conversation and get that bank account set up. So a few helpful tips for filing the LLC articles. Naming the LLC is important. Most states do require that you have LLC or LC in the name, and it must be different from any other state entity, any other entity in that state. If you're using an IRA, we do request that you do not include Advanta or the term IRA in the naming of the LLC. Again, as I referenced kind of when opening the bank account, that could just lead to confusion on either the financial institution's end or through other entities moving forward as you're making investments with that account. You don't want an investment to be placed in your LLC to ever be falling back into Advanta or, or be documented back through Advanta as a company directly uh, or someone to misconstrue your LLC's investment as a direct IRA investment, which is separate here in this strategy case scenario. Listing a registered agent as yourself or a third party registered agent service is something that you may do. Each state requires you to have a person or a company available to receive legal notices and service of process. So typically if you're doing it yourself, you may list your home or your office address. You can also list a third party registered agent. Uh, again, if you're using a referral service for setting up the LLC, they may list themselves as the registered agent and reach back out to you directly once any notices are received. And the articles must name a manager, which I referenced on a few of those previous slides. With an IRA LLC, it cannot have a managing member as the IRA would be the member and cannot sign documents as I referred to as well. So creating the operating agreement when you set up an account with Advanta and reach out to us to set up an LLC, we actually send you a dedicated instruction email that outlines a few bullet points that you'll need to have in your operating agreement. A lot of our clients, if they don't go to our attorneys or CPA referral sources, uh, just simply do a quick Google search for single member LLC operating agreement or use a service like LegalZoom or uh, one of those services that provide a, a cheap or at low cost template operating agreement. As I mentioned in our disclaimer slide, we're not able to provide legal or tax advice. So we can't provide a template operating agreement for you, but again, I have seen clients use just a simple Google search, pull a three to five page operating agreement, make sure it fits the criteria in our bullet pointed instructional email and push forward with that operating agreement. So it's definitely something you can do. There's no right or wrong operating agreement. Just make sure it fits the needs and the criteria that you have 
as well as the specific minimum inclusions that we have set forth, which are an effective date of the agreement, the name of the members, the name of the managers, the ownership percentage specifically, how members can be removed from the LLC or added to the LLC, the voting procedures, taxation, and then a signature for all members and managers. You can also have provisions in your LLC operating agreement for terminating the agreement, how to address disagreements among members, removal of managers, right of first refusal, buy sell arrangements, governing law, and arbitration for disputes. The operating agreement will ultimately be signed by the manager of the LLC, which would be yourself and any other managers you may choose to list, and by the retirement account, which would be an Advanta IRA signatory executing that after you as the account holder have approved the paperwork and authorized us to sign it on behalf of your IRA or 401k. Now, once you have the LLC established, You've processed the transaction to move the money from Advanta's possession into your LLC bank account. You can start making your investments in the name of that LLC. As you invest, all of the cash flow will flow directly back into and out of that LLC's bank account. It's your responsibility to maintain proper bookkeeping records of the LLC's actions, and you must report the value of the LLC or the trust to Advanta annually. We do have what's known as a fair market valuation form. We typically send out a request at the end of each year around November to let you know that the FMBs are coming due. And we follow up a few times until we receive that fair market valuation from you. I've got videos on our YouTube channel that specifically outline an easy and simple way to complete your FMB. You can reach out to your account manager if you have questions, but at a minimum, you have to report back to us what the total value of your LLC is worth once a year for proper IRS record keeping and protocol. Again, the earnings stay within the LLC until you decide you wanna use them for another investment, move them out to a managed account and put them back on the stock market if that may be, or take any personal distributions of this money. You can partner your IRA funds with an LLC, with other LLCs or other investors. This is something that I did cover earlier on these slides about uh, disqualified persons and individuals that you can partner with. But again, just reiterated here, it must receive the appropriate uh, portion of shares and expenses. So if your IRA is a 50% owner with yourself and a piece of property by an LLC, and you have a $10,000 roof to be repaired, well, 5,000 of that must come out of your IRA's LLC, and 5,000 of it must come out of your personal pocket. When multiple parties, it can make management a little bit more cumbersome. So an LLC is a great way to cut down on that where you only need to split the ownership and the breakdown of those expenses when you're winding down or sending distributions out of the LLC, as long as the money stays in that LLC's pocket, if you will, uh, that ownership percentage is kind of just pulled together until you're taking money out or adding more money in. So it's a great strategy if you're going to be partnering on an investment to go ahead and set up an LLC for that investment, or if you've already got an LLC and you want to partner that LLC, sometimes people even set up a sub LLC or a secondary LLC for each specific investment. Uh, that does get into a little bit of tediousness with strategy. So again, make sure you're comfortable with those strategy arrangements or you speak with a CPA, a tax preparer, or even your Advanta representative to talk about what strategy you anticipate using and make sure it fits your needs. So if you decide that you want to take a distribution or move money out to a managed account, maybe go to a, a hedge fund style IRA with some of the earnings you've made through your LLC or trust arrangement, the process is that the money must come back from the LLC or the trust to Advanta IRA. So you send it via a check, an ACH or a wire. We deposit that money into your retirement account. And then you send us a distribution form to Advanta to actually distribute the funds out to the owner and issue a 1099, which means you've distributed funds out of the account. 
You can also do a custodian to custodian transfer if you are looking to move funds back to a managed retirement account somewhere else. Uh, but just to keep in mind, you should not be taking money directly from the LLC or from the trust for any personal use or movement to any other retirement custodian that has to flow back through Advanta for proper record keeping and documentation. So looking at the pros and cons of buying directly through an IRA, not using the checkbook strategy. The pros are that it's easier to keep arm's length from your IRA funds, and you're less likely to engage in prohibited transactions. And Advanta IRA, as your administrator custodian, clear all records and have all activity documented of your transactions and of your retirement account. You can always look at your statements and your activity on your online portal, reach out to your client account manager for any questions you have. But we have all those documents because you're processing everything through our custodianship. The cons are that there may be a little bit more administrative fees when you have multiple assets and you do not have the ability to write checks yourself for immediate purchases. Typically, we do get transactions and purchase transactions done within 24 to 48 hours of a client notifying us. But if you're someone that's trying to go real quick on a tax deed and lien auction or submit an offer on a piece of property or just have really tight timelines on the type of investments you're trying to do, checkbook control might be a better option and better fit for you. The other option that we have when you're making payments or causing expenses through a retirement account, you can always sign into your online portal and submit a bill payment request. If those are submit prior to 12 noon Eastern, we get them cut and sent out the same day. If they're after 12 noon Eastern, we typically get those payment requests sent out the very next business day. So the pros and cons of using checkbook control, Pretty much the opposite of what I went over on the last slide. The pros are that you have quick access to your IRA funds for auctions or other fast paced moving investments. You can hold more assets in an LLC and be billed by Advanta lower fees because we're only billing in most investors fee agreements based on the one LLC investment we have in our books. And then each investment you hold within that LLC, we're not necessarily billing you for. If you have more questions about our fee arrangements, please feel free to reach out to me directly. I'm not gonna cover it specifically on this webinar, but I'd be happy to share that with you and have that conversation with you on a one-to-one -one basis. And the LLC also offers the possibility of additional asset protection and anonymity for any investments you're making. Again, you don't have to have your name in the LLC's name. You should not have Advanta or IRA in the name of the LLC. So if John Doe has just Investment Ventures LLC as the entity owning all of his assets, it's gonna have a little bit anonymity and protection uh, unless someone's doing really deep diving into your LLC and that is public access and record information that way. The cons to the LLC setup is you are more responsible for keeping accurate records of your LLC's actions. There is a lack of oversight from Advanta or the IRA administrator. Again, we're not a big brother to the LLC. We can't see everything that you're doing within that LLC or the bank account information at all. That's only on your discretion and at your uh, access point. So we're always there to answer questions and help you. Again, your client account manager is a resource for you to reach out to, but it is easier for you to engage in prohibited transactions if you're not comfortable and well aware of the rules and regulations yourself. So with all this said, what is the best strategy for you? I've said it a few times here, but please consult your attorney, your CPA or other advisors to decide what is the best strategy for you to hold your assets we can provide references to attorneys and CPAs. We've got a network across the country. So depending on what area you're in, we may have someone local to you, but our referral sources are also able to help you across various areas, even if they're not local to you specifically. To be honest, most of our clients do choose to simply hold the assets directly in their account and have their client account manager process their day-to-day -day actions within the account and allow us to do the record keeping. But the checkbook strategy may be a good use for you if you're comfortable with doing that and you've got more of an entrepreneurial driven mindset to your retirement investment strategies. It is possible to switch in the future. So if you set up an LLC and you want to dilute, dilute it and decide it's not a good fit for you, that's perfectly fine. 
or if you make investments and decide that you do feel comfortable with an LLC in the future, you can always set that strategy up and move your assets into the LLC at any point in time. And we are not able to provide any counsel or advice on investment strategies. Again, part of that disclaimer I gave earlier today. So the key takeaway points I'd like everyone to walk away with from this webinar is that checkbook control is a great strategy for many self-directed investors, but not everyone. There are specific considerations for setting up an LLC, a trust, or even a solo 401k for checkbook control. Once the checkbook is set up and in use, any funds for personal use must flow back to the account administrator for proper distribution. If you did enjoy this content or have any other questions or interest in self-directed investment strategies, maybe some other content that we have on the checkbook control strategy, feel free to check out our video library on YouTube. We also put on multiple events. If we're in your area, we may be doing a webinar or a lunch and learn that you could attend in person. And we also have a blog. So if you're interested in industry news, go to our website and sign up for our blog. We'll have some great industry news as that comes available to you from uh, that perspective. And at this point, I'm going to start taking questions. I'm gonna scroll back up to the beginning of the questions that were asked. If you have any questions that you want me to get to, please type them in now and I will go through them all accordingly. Uh, I'm gonna start right now. So I'm gonna flip the slide deck over to my contact information as I get the questions underway. UDFI, give examples of leverage real estate investments. So unrelated debt financed income or UDFI is a specific type of tax that comes into play if you're using your retirement account to purchase a property with debt financing. So let's just say you don't have enough to buy a piece of property outright, but you do secure financing through a lender that's willing to lend on a non-recourse basis. There would be tax subject to the percentage or value of the property that you are leveraging. So if you're trying to buy a $200,000 property, you have $160,000 in your retirement account and you need to finance $40,000, you would be subject to paying UDFI for that leveraged amount. I'm not an expert in UDFI or that tax strategy specifically, so for anything further than that explanation, I would definitely implore you to check with your CPA or tax preparer. Can you buy property with your LLC and self-directed IRA at a different percentage, not 50-50, but maybe 60-40? Yes, you can buy at any ownership percentage. I've seen a client use a 5% ownership percentage with themselves personally and 95% in their retirement account. I've seen clients do 50-50, 75-25. There's no limit to what that percentage set is. It is important that you set that percentage most specifically with disqualified persons at the onset, but even anytime you're doing an investment, even with non-disqualified persons, you wanna set that ownership percentage based on how much money each person's bringing to the table and make sure that all investors have the ability to make further contributions at that percentage if any additional capital is needed for the deal that you're setting up. Many investors say they are scared of checkbook control because they believe IRS is looking at these and will audit, et cetera. Then your entire account is at risk if you made a mistake. Well, to follow up there, typically these accounts are not audited unless the IRS is already looking at an individual and planning to audit an individual basis. Then they start looking at retirement accounts and LLCs, et cetera, things items held within a retirement account. So. As far as an audit goes, uh, we typically don't see that taking place. They're not hyper sensitive and, and checking into checkbook control strategies. Uh, they would have to typically be looking at an individual for potential cases and need for audit before they further look into a retirement account. And again, it is possible to make a mistake in your LLC. Uh, that's why we're here as a resource to answer questions you may have and help however we can before you make any investments or transactions that could be prohibited. If you do make one, the IRS tends to be lenient when you notice that you've made a mistake and take corrective measures as quickly and efficiently as possible. Uh, that'd be something to work out with your account manager or your uh, appropriate 
financial advisors and, and counsel uh, if you are in a position where you've made a mistake and need to unwind that or, or fix that as efficiently as possible. How are RMDs treated in the LLC? Well, from Advanta's perspective, we base the RMDs on what the total value that you're reporting to us is, so that fair market valuation that I referred to earlier. Once you know what your RMD is relative to your account, you can actually take that RMD amount from any retirement account you hold. So if you've got an LLC that is not necessarily liquid and you've got a managed account with another custodian that is easier to be liquidated or already liquid, you can pull that RMD amount from a completely different retirement account to satisfy the RMD. You can also pull or liquidate assets in your LLC to take as a distribution. But again, you're gonna to need to title that if it's an asset in kind from the LLC over to your Advanta account and take that distribution out of the Advanta account. If it's cash, you'll simply move the cash from the LLC back to Advanta and initiate a distribution of that money. But basically it's treated just the same way any other retirement account required minimum distribution would be. You'll have to take either assets valued at your RMD amount or cash up to the RMD amount required out of any retirement account you hold so that you can satisfy that RMD for that year. What about solo K plans? Heard these are a little safer because if you make a mistake, only that deal is at risk with the IRS, not the entire account. Well, we do offer solo K plans. We do have three actual options. So you could have a do your own solo K where you're basically just leasing our 401k plan document and serving as your own trustee, custodian and administrator. You would set up your own bank account and it would serve as checkbook control without actually having to establish an LLC specifically. We also have two record keeping options where we are the custodian administrator of that 401k plan. You are the trustee and you would set up the LLC strategy if you're using either of our record keeping accounts. As far as a little bit safer, uh, that would depend on what investments you're trying to make. But yes, um, it's really a, a better tool for individuals that are worried about making mistakes. Also, the certain type of taxes, UBIT and UDFI, do not apply to solo K investments. Uh, so if you're looking to do investments with leverage of real estate or leveraging assets, the solo K may be a better fit for you in those scenarios. Someone asked, please send a recording of this webinar. Uh, if you use the email address that you've requested here, uh, we will be sending a recording to you. Anyone that signed up for our webinars, whether you're here live attending or not able to attend, should receive the recording the following day. Uh, in an email. We'll also make sure we reach out to you just to touch base and see if you have any further questions from there. There are two final questions I'm gonna get to. So if anyone has any additional questions they'd like to add or ask, please feel free to do so now. If I do not see them by the time I'm wrapped up with these two questions, I will go ahead and wrap up the webinar. Regarding the UDFI question, is that the only for bank financing or also for seller financing? Well, in any capacity for a retirement account to receive financing, it must be non-recourse lending. And in that context, UDFI may apply to the amount of the asset that's being leveraged. I'm not sure if I understand this question specifically, uh, but a retirement account can also offer seller financing. So uh, if you own a piece of property in your retirement account, you can finance that to the buyer uh, that wouldn't necessarily be UDFI related because you would be uh, both the seller of the asset in question and also the lender to the buyer in a completely new asset, which would be a, a loan, whether it's a secured or an unsecured loan. Would UDFI also be applied if you are getting seller financing? Okay, thanks for that follow-up question. Uh, yes, if you are getting seller financing, UDFI would probably be applied. Again, the only financing you're allowed to have in a retirement account is non-recourse lending and furthermore udfi would potentially apply to the portion of the overall asset that's being financed when moving cash from an ira into an llc bank account are there tax implications no that is simply an investment transaction 
where you're directing your retirement account custodian to fund an investment into an LLC entity that is held by your retirement account. There's no tax implications there. It's simply an investment transaction where your retirement account's investing into the LLC. Then moving forward, you're the manager of that LLC and making investments within that LLC as you see fit, obviously within IRS compliance. See section 4975 for that. But UDFI does not apply if you have a solo K, correct? That is correct. Uh, the solo 401k is not subject to the UDFI tax. So that is something that those investors may seek as opposed to a checkbook IRA or other types of accounts if using non-recourse lending and debt financing is part of your investment strategy and goal. All right, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and conclude the webinar. If you do have any specific questions or interests, please feel free to reach out to me directly. My contact information has been here on the screen. If you are a client of Advanta, you can go ahead and reach your client account manager and they'll be able to help you with any additional questions or concerns you may have. Thank you so much for participating with me today. I hope this has been helpful and valuable to all of you and have a wonderful rest of your day.